Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, everybody. Everybody stay up here. What we're going to do is this. We want to get people's questions and thoughts. But the focus, I know there's some other folks here on issues of double tracking. If you have questions with me, I will absolutely commit to holding a meeting on that to, to get everybody's voice. I heard a, I heard a discussion on, on the issue of the airport or of the, the high-speed rail or other questions. What we're trying to do here tonight it, by bringing people together from all corners of the valley, and thanks for schlepping here, and it, you're, you're putting your time in the community to do this, but to be able for us to understand as we're to build together a coalition, to have uh, you know the Metro Board, whose leadership is here, was here last time, graciously listening. You've already seen the impact it's had. We can tell you other examples of that, all of which has been positive, to be able to do that. So we're gonna fan out. There was a question over here. I know I told this young lady we'd call on her. and. Get your, if you have a comment that you want to share, make it as fast as you can. We're going to hold on to the mic so you don't grab it like last time I wouldn't let go and, and the mics and there's a problem. But we and it's such a pain to take it from it once it starts. So you know. just quickly, if you have a question, fine, of anybody up here. If you don't have a question and you want to share your thoughts, please share them with us. That's fine. We'll get to everybody. Let's start right here. Hi. Um, our, well, the neighborhood council, Porter Ranch Neighborhood Council's concern and as a parent, my concern has been in Porter Ranch, a bus is a very rare sight. There's a bus that comes up, I don't know from where, but it always stops in front of Walmart and that's it. People think that's covering Porter Ranch and it's not. We have a whole east side that goes all the way to Zelza or Reseda. We could cut cars that go to CSUN by 10% maybe, if the kids had a bus to get on. Could you help us organize the community so we can then make it easier? Because these guys have the whole county of 12 million people, over it is, to help deliver that and see if we can get a, 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 a significant enough group to help you put that together. We'll work with you on that. Thank you. This is your, it's, it's Mitch's district. If it's not, it will be in the future. But we'll definitely want to help is, you on it that. It is, it is. Thank heavens it is. Okay, and, and by the way, everybody stick around for two reasons. One, we want everybody who's interested to sign up on this beautiful artwork that we did. If you remember we did this last time, I love this stuff. It's a lot of fun to kind of capture the moment that people want to be on it. And second, we got, again, Hertzberg gift bags. Okay, Richard, you can point out to people. No, Max has it. Okay, uh, I have a two-point question and comment. Number one is um, nobody mentioned bicycles, which I think is a sixty-five million dollars in this plan for bicycles. Okay, awesome. And the other one is thank you, thank you. Um, there's a lot of underutilized uh, streets, which I call like greenways, uh, Chase, um, at, um, Mail, that can be used as bike throughways, and they're like signals are not right. Sometimes there are no signals. It's like playing uh, leapfrog or a frogger. So I want you to keep that in mind. There are streets that bicyclists can use safely and very comfortably to, to use. Yeah, to yeah, get we've around. heard that from a lot of people, the idea of bikes on smaller streets where A, the traffic's not as much and you could use the larger thoroughfares for bigger transportation. Sorry. That's part of what the, part of the FAST program, fixing Angelino stuck That's in right. traffic that Hillary's pioneered. The FAST program Hillary has- Hillary Norton right here in front. The FAST program has looked at, at redoing the way Victory and Van Owen work but also taking bikes out of the major thoroughfares and using some of the smaller streets right. and greenways as the gentleman suggested. Jay. Uh, hi, Senator. My name is uh, Terry Mon, and I'm a student leader for, as a sustainability officer for the California State Student Association. So I'm working with a campus of Cal Poly Pomona in the greater Los Angeles area in the terms of um, putting more alternative transportation, like getting a bus stop on our campus. And Right now, there's already been a resolution passed by the Associate Students and their Academic Senate in support of alternative transportation, but there's a lot of pushback from the uh, university president and the administration in like saying like, oh, we have, um, wait until our master plan. I was wondering what more can the student voice do in pushing and showing the administration that alternative transportation is an urgency on our campus. I got the president right here. This is like pulling her right out of line, here she is. She just spoke at the press conference talking about how many tons of greenhouse gases are generated and what she wants to reduce. Let's just have her quickly respond. 
I believe that was the president at Cal Poly Pomona. <laughs> yeah. Not Northridge. Not Northridge. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm all about reducing okay. our carbon emissions. Okay, so he's not one of yours. Is that a, no, no. no. There you go. From the horse's mouth. Okay. What? Barry? What's next? Who's Jake. Next? Thanks. Here it goes. Very, very uh, Jake. Yeah, hi. Um, g getting back to something that Richard mentioned, which is what can we can do in five years. I want to talk about uh, if somebody can talk about the uh, Sepulveda Pass. Obviously, if you're going to build a tunnel and do sorts, that's going to be a very, very long-term project. Um, when we when the um, Sepulveda Pass. Uh, was reconstructed. I'm not quite sure why we didn't put in bus rapid transit at that point, but what can we do now maybe with uh, some, uh, some lanes uh, along the side or whatever? What can, what can we do within five years to get some real relief there and not 20 years down the line? No, it's a good question because, you know, it's the single biggest traffic reliever in the, for the valley would be something else going, well, traffic reliever in the valley going north-south. Um, the original concept that um, we started several years ago was to um, was literally a tunnel that would go from the Van Nuys Civic Center area and connect to the Purple Line on Veteran and Wilshire, a stop at UCLA. Uh, that is still what the what is under active consideration by the MTA as a public-private partnership. The problem with putting BRT or bus rapid transit on the 405 is the grade from the Valley floor to Mulholland is too great for a rapid transit vehicle. And therefore, I mean, so that's why there's a technical reason that, that, that we're, we're not going in that corridor. We, we have looked at uh, the idea, the MTA is considering the idea of putting two carpool lanes in each direction and making them managed lanes like we have on the 110. Uh, one for obviously carpools, the other for people who wanna put a transponder on their car and, and, and pay the extra dollar to travel in that express lane. As, uh, as a way to both finance the tunnel and also more expeditious traffic travel from to and from the valley on the west side. But, the, but there is a technical reason we're not going up the back side of that, that we tried to get around it, couldn't figure out how to do it. We also looked at putting buses on Sepulveda itself, but it's too crowded already. And you also have the windy part of Sepulveda from uh, Valley Vista all the way up to Skirball through the back way is, all, is impossible for mass transit vehicles also. I just want a little disclaimer here. That picture's at least 10 years old. Oh, more than that. <laughs> a lot more than that, bud. 25. Max. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, oh, thank you. Hi, I'm Barbara Wilson, and I come from Mental Health. And so uh, I want to thank all of you for being here and for putting this together. We have been worried and trying to advocate for stoplights to be installed by mental health clinics. People that are on SSI or some form of disability are completely dependent on mass transit. And if they are taking their medications, which we all hope they will be doing, they may be photosensitive to sunlight. Well, we happen to have a lot of sunlight, especially in the summer. Um, so right now we have a bus that goes to Olive View, but it goes up into the main campus. It does not stop at the Psychiatric Urgent Care Center, which is a different building. We also need a stoplight or a stop sign by the West Valley Mental Health Clinic in Canoga Park. And finally, thank you so much for mentioning Santa Clarita, because we have absolutely no day treatment programs in the Santa Clarita Valley, so there's no connection. But let me just take uh, an answer to that. Councilman. Uh, so since those are, and those are primarily city uh, issues that, that we deal with often, I've worked with, and, I, and I'm just looking out at the room here, how many traffic lights and stop signs and things we've done, certainly in my district, and working closely with the council member of that district is critically important. I would suggest first by going to the neighborhood councils because they are our eyes and ears on the street on every corner, and they know best, quite frankly, how to work and pull those projects together with the council offices. So we've been, and it was mentioned earlier, Vincennes, we just did that light a couple years ago. Uh, just to give you an idea, the cost of a traffic light go is about 150 to $200,000 to put in one light, to give that, anybody a that, sense. But to, to help that, remember right. the local return money we were talking about before, that's that 15%? What was, right. That's what that money can be used for, so a new measure R, which will generate more local return money, that's so, one of the uses. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate you finishing my thought. So, um, yeah, well, thank you. We've done this before, you know. You're on the other side of the. Um, 
So what we've done is we use the local return money on the la Oh, I'm sorry, you covered that. Yeah, so... Okay, not, obviously not as well as you are, yeah, so, so please. So there's actually, and I, was, I started mentioning the price tag. It is very expensive to do those local projects because it's not just putting up a light anytime you want to put a light up. It's got to look at the reconfiguration of the left and turn um, pockets, the left turn pockets, the right turn pockets, the re-engineering and the infrastructure of the ADSAC systems, which is our automatic traffic signalization systems. Everything's got trigger points, so they know when there's somebody there and how long to trigger that light. It's all operated from a universal center downtown. So there's a lot of infrastructure costs and engineering that actually goes into them. That local return money would actually come back to local communities to be able to fix a lot of those issues, whether it's um, smart pedestrian crosswalks, which are really important, illuminated crosswalks like we've done on Zelza, and putting those in some other high pedestrian areas, uh, particularly around sensitive locations, those are key. And you know, I look at this as a community by community issue, not just a regional issue. And, that's why um, I think those questions are really important to be answered as well. Thank you. All right. Oh, sorry. Wait. Okay. Um, I'm a CSUN student. My name is Lorenzo. Thank right. You, uh, how, is there anything that CSUN can do to reduce the process, process to get a reduced fare tap card? It takes a, a good four to six weeks. I had to get an uh, official document, a photo, uh, a picture on real photo paper, and I had to travel all the way out to the basin just to get a good week you know, shaved off from the process, as well uh, as uh, reduce, uh, increase the sub fare subsidy, right? We got a fare increase, fair increase last year, about last year, and the subsidy also was cut in half, so instead of uh, about 23, went up, we paid 33 now. Is there anything that can be done on that? Yeah, let me ask Stephanie to, I'm sorry, Colin, do you wanna, well, do you wanna fix it for him or you want me to let Metro? <laughs> I'll let Stephanie give the details, but the good news is we're in, we're in partnership on this, and we had a great meeting a couple of weeks ago with Stephanie and her staff, and we're on their pilot. We're going to roll out vast improvements to, that, uh, to their UPASS program. I'll let, I'll let her speak about that. I wanted to take just a quick second, the gentleman from Cal Poly that had a question I, in the front. I, I wanted to maybe better answer your question, um, and I'm glad you're here. You know. Uh, Today, I'm 100% Matador, 100% Red Matador, but 30 years ago, I was 100% Bronco, I'm a, so I'm glad you're here. Um, so now you know what's in store for your future. Yeah, <laughs> yeah be careful. Um, but I think, I think really, the question was, just if I can recap it right, how, how do you get your, more involved with your administration, right, in, in pushing some of these? Okay. So number one, Stephanie's going to talk in a minute about this UPASS program. Cal Poly should be involved in that too. This is, a, this is a huge effort that they're putting together and they're really working hard to roll this out for next fall. So we'll have a vast improvement. But the other piece is I think it's, it's working through your student government. Uh, I can tell you right here, I'll speak for President Harrison. I think George has our attention on this issue. So um, I, I think it's just critically important that the student government is, is working hand in hand with the administration because this is really a joint issue for everybody and I know where where Cal Poly sits it's you need transit no question so Stephanie yes um, we recognize that our current approach to providing a discount for college students is broken and needs to be restructured we actually have our first task force meeting next week where CSUN is a prominently featured on that task force we're committed to um, restructure our program, it will go into effect next fall, but at a minimum, the focus is leveraging technology so you can get your pass on campus, load it on campus, not have a delay, have it part of your re registration and not have to do the paper application, the old way of government. So we're working on it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, MTA. Glenn Bailey, right there. Glenn Bailey. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Northridge East Neighborhood Council Boundaries. We, we include all of Cal State Northridge. Um, some of us have been around long enough to remember this process back many decades ago that Mayor Bradley undertook to bring the Red Line subway to the valley. It wasn't a foregone conclusion that it actually would make itself to the valley. And my question is, are we looking outside the box, looking to the future decades enough to extend the subway, that technology, west to the Van Nuys Civic Center or to the Sepulveda Station to serve the 405 commuters 
and then allow that same technology to loop back to the UCLA extension on Wilshire Boulevard. So basically, we could have a loop, a loop that people could go either way to downtown Los Angeles, or they could go to UCLA, or, or UCLA could make a round to, to North Hollywood. I haven't heard that. All I've heard is, is light rail and possibly a separate technology of a tunnel. But I'm hoping you're really looking at uh, looking towards the future like what was done in order to bring the initial subway to the valley. If you could comment on that. Thank you. Okay, that, Stephanie, you want, have any more questions? Um, we continue to look at all modes and all technologies um, in the most cost-effective way to deliver this congestion relief and easing traffic that we need to do. So nothing is off the table. Hey, can, I, can, I, can I just want to say something about that? Because this is a really hard public policy question, okay? about how much money does it cost, how many millions of dollars a mile to drill these tunnels, and how do you do this stuff. You know, and when Zev and I went to Curitiba, and we came back, we took a lot of heat for saying, let's just do a bus rapid transit along the right of way, because it could get done immediately. We got it done in a few years. You heard the statistics about how much better it is. And do you wait, because we were debating this tunnel idea and a, an underground uh, approach, or do you get something now, build it in a way that you can add steel wheels and add something else and do the other thing. How do you deal with the current generation versus the future generation in terms of allocating money? It's a very challenging question. I just want to, in that context, say one thing that Zev mentioned in his opening I think is important and we talked to Mr. Washington about was the idea of extending the red line up as a regional project because just there, there's, when you talk about cash, big projects, there's regional projects like to the airport, and then there's local projects like what we want here at CSUN. Um, and the idea is to extend from North Hollywood uh, that, that underground tunnel all the way up to Burbank so that if you're gonna have really good transportation at LAX, you can literally, like around the world, if people have been fortunate to see some of these at their airports, you get an escalator, you go downstairs, you get in the train, you can come to the valley, you can come downtown, and just the economic impacts and the like. I don't know if the money's there, we're gonna fight for it. They seem pretty reasonable about it in terms of the underlying uh, um, regional nature of it and the importance of it. There's no promises at all. But that's the concept to do those kinds of things because we do have to, when Stuart mentioned there's only two stops in the valley for the train and there's 80 some and 100 and some coming online other parts of the city, we do need to both have transportation but have some of the important elements like what you're talking about as part of our structure. If that's and helpful. just also in answering very quickly, because I know we have a lot of other questions. Part of it also, Glenn, you know, would be to take the red line, extend it west, so it ties into the light rail or whatever the technology is going to be used to go from north south through the Sepulveda Pass or to relieve the Sepulveda Pass. So it does connect. It's all about connectivity and it's all about, as I said before, options. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're trying to accommodate new technologies as they get developed. So we've got to solve a problem that's immediate without precluding new solutions in the future. And that's part of what makes this dance very difficult because you got to do both. 